G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. This is game number three in the series between Vortex, who spawns in on the south side of the map playing as the French in the color blue, and his opponent who spawns on the north side of the map playing as the Delhi in the color red, it's Puppy Paw. This is game number three of their series in the Road to Red Bull Wallalow Legacy. This is the grand finals, baby. Well, I say the grand finals, but technically it's the finals because there is going to be another series coming up after this one. If you've enjoyed this series, well, this is only the first of two. Uh, so there's going to be plenty more action where that one came from. But let's take a little look about this about this map, about this game, and see exactly how it's going to unfold because we've got quite ourselves an interesting matchup today. This is a Delhi versus the French matchup. And this map, of course, is Lippany. Lippany, a map infamous or, or known for its plethora of berries. Berries absolutely everywhere. There you are. If you like berries, you're going to have a very good time here. There are plenty of them out on this map. So a normal map would have three patches of berries so that would mean one close to your base that would mean one a little bit further away and then that would mean one a little bit further away than that lipany however gives you an extra two patches of berries now i don't know where exactly those have spawned but you can see up towards this northern side there's just these wonderful little circles or semicircles of berries four patches all around this corner so berry heaven if you like berries oh you're gonna be loving this map right now but uh, let's talk about how we expect this game to unfold as that villager almost makes his way back to the town center. So this this game is all about denying the food. Uh, so the French are going to be looking to try and deny as much food as they can from the deli. It's all about that food control. Now, it's going to be pretty easy for them to actually take out sacred sites because they're going to have knights. And knights, what are they known for? They're known for their, I guess you could probably say nobility, like they're noble. Uh, that's why they're knights, uh, but they're also known for their mobility, uh, which is another thing that uh, that nobles have obviously got. I'm just kidding. I've got no idea if nobles are mobile, uh, but the, the big thing is that you're going to be hovering between these sacred sites, first sacred site, second sacred site. It's all about controlling these two bad boys. So maybe we even see some outposts come up in the middle and he uses them as like a staging, a station, a station, a staging ground. That's the word I'm looking for, a staging ground. Uh, towards these two sacred sites. So the alternative is that he looks to try and wall them in. We'll watch and wait and see how Vortex plays it, though, uh, because the shoe is definitely going to be on his foot because he's going to be our French player today. Uh, so we do see that age up now coming through. It's going to be the School of Cavalry. Very standard opening coming out for Vortex today. Nothing too complicated, nothing too complex. Uh, no early wood chopping just yet, but uh, we can see he's got one on there. Now going to be going on to one on the lumber camp, and that'll be two. Third one will be coming out here. So looks like a standard uh, wheelbarrow opening here. Uh, three out on the gold as well. Uh, now moving out there. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, your standard wheelbarrow opening. And we'll check back in with Puppy Paw and see how he's doing because that age up is going to be coming through very, very shortly. Uh, we can hear him actually clearing out the wolves up towards the north here just to make sure that his scholars don't have any issues on these sacred sites. Speaking of scholars, the Dome of the Faith is going to be coming through. And, uh, and some attacks going to be coming through from Vortex. And God, wasn't that alarm so loud? I tell you what, I think I've got, I must have my volumes turned up or something right now because these alarms are very loud. I got to remind myself to go turn those down after the, after this game finishes. House going to be coming down here. You can see Vortex getting a little bit too close to the town center. And uh, a, a sheep just chilling out in nearby for the moment. Villager just going to be moving into range of the town center. And now back towards the other side. We've got mutual scout harassment coming in on the gold mine. So a little bit of early aggression out from both of these guys, but nothing too serious. Normally you'd see a scout come back and look to, look to try and uh, look to try and be, how do you say, forcing these two scouts away. But instead going to be coming out with the scholar. Smart move here. Somewhat similar to what the Holy Roman Empire do with their prelates. And that's going to force these villagers on this side. This is a big brain move from Puppy Paw. I like this. A super smart early play. School of Cavalry almost finished here. We can see Puppy Paw's racing his up as well. There's four villagers on each of these landmarks. So we're going to see Vortex up a little bit earlier. He's going to have just enough resources here to get out his... Uh, to get out his uh, knight, I say that, he's one short, he's one gold short, there it is, 10 coming in, and we got blasted by that gold, let's see if we can do it again over here on this side, Dome of the Faith going to be coming up for Puppy Paw, we can see him getting through those upgrades, Wheelbarrow going to be the first one coming through, no survival techniques in queue here, might be jumping straight into a horticulture, I'm going to try and get hit again by that Dome of the Faith, I've been hit by that like uh, three times now, let's, let's go for about here, this is where I'm going to bet my money on, oh baby, get it for me, sorry to all, all, all. Sorry to everybody in the chat that's got... What's that condition? You know, I, I get it sometimes when, you know, when there's lots of flashing lights and I'm, I'm, I have to cover my eyes. I'm like, bro, 
calm down. It's, it's that kind of thing. Like, hi, uh, not maybe like hyper sensitive, something like that. I don't know exactly. Scout going to be coming out. Now, Puppy Paw does scout this out. And immediately you can see that the, the, the scouts are tasked towards that knight. He wants to follow this knight. He wants to shadow it all the way back. That's exactly what he's going to do. Follow it back. Doesn't actually have his dagger out because he's, he's very scared of the fact that that knight might turn around and look to punish. But now that knight moving out, he's going to be careful on the gold mine. Spearman is out. Number one, Spearman. Number two coming out now. Has to move them down towards this position. He's needs to move them towards that position sooner rather than later. He's already got the plus 25 health in, and that's one of the dynamics in this matchup that really makes the difference. So, for anybody playing along at home, the charge from the knight, together with the first attack, is enough to actually kill a villager. Once you get that upgrade, once you get that extra 25 health from textiles, it now takes, instead of that charge and one hit, you're going to need a charge, plus one hit, plus two hits, plus three hits. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely crazy how much value you get from that technology. So the Delhi, they're able to get it for free. So any other sieve, you'd have to pay 100 gold and I think it's 50 food. Let's double check that. Yeah, 100 gold, 50 food uh, for any other sieve. But the Delhi get it for free. So why the heck not? Sounds like a good deal to me. Puppy Paw now going to be walling up over towards his northern flank, preventing any sort of cavalry... Any, any sort of cavalry... What was I thinking of? Harassment? Any sort of cavalry charges maybe uh, coming through on that side? Not going to be the case for him. More and more spears coming out. I suspect we're going to see a stable uh, coming out shortly from him. Typically in this matchup, that's what you do see the Delhi players look to do. Go for the melee composition. He's already got the blacksmith down, and we can see him going into that plus one melee attack. He's also got plus one ranged armor coming through. He's got to be careful with the villagers, and just beautiful micro right there from Puppy Paw. Almost baiting in that knight. Uh, and now forcing it back. We'll take a look from Vortex's perspective. It's going to be a second town center here, which is exactly what he needs to do in this matchup. I'm a big fan of second town center here. I think it gives you a win condition that isn't just killing your enemy because when it comes to this matchup, you know, stopping them from getting food on a map like this, it can be difficult. It really can be difficult, especially especially with a Delhi spawn. You take a look at Puppy Paw's spawn. He's got a great little spot up here. Like one, two, three food sources all in that area. That's going to be great for him. He's also got this one to expand down to. And it's right next to these sacred sites as well. So that's where he's going to naturally be wanting to go. He's got the, the berries out a little bit further here. But other than that, nothing down towards that western side of the map. It's pretty barren with the exception of that relic. Push coming down towards the middle. He's going to be able to spot out that second town center. And now... Puppy Paw somewhat knows that he's on a bit of a timer, I would say. And the question is, how does he go about countering that? Because from here, all that Vortex needs to do is continue making units in the Feudal Age. That's all he needs to do. Make archers, make knights. That's it. That's all he does. And then from there, he's going to wait for his enemy to go castle. He goes castle himself after his enemy goes castle. That's going to be the, the big thing. And then looks to drop the Royal Institute. Once you go for that second town center, it really makes all the difference. Going for that Royal Institute. Villagers moving out towards the gold mine. Other villagers going out towards the deer in the center of the map. A couple of spearmen going to be able to collect up these these royal knights as they move in towards these looking for villagers. Actually losing a royal knight on the backside there. Puppy Paw just all over this map right now. Doing a great job. Going to be second royal knight that goes down. Third royal knight going to go down potentially. Oh my lord, it was so close. But big losses coming out here. Chasing back the scholars now. A single royal knight going to be doing that. And we can hear the, the spearmen calling out. He's going to be able to get that scholar. And with that, the royal knight going to have to back away for the moment down towards the south side an outpost already going to be coming up here for his opponent puppy paw and we do see the knight moving down there but obviously he's just going to be able to jump in inside jump outside jump inside jump outside all that those cheeky little shenanigans that they love to do we'll watch as he looks to now attack that that uh, that scholar he's gonna be careful here the scholar doesn't actually have piety in one more hit and he might go down and not gonna be the case today keep in mind scholar cannot heal himself scout holding position on the sacred site scholar or uh, rather, uh, Villager, going to be found out. It's going to be heading back towards that, uh, that that building. I think he's going to be able to make it inside. And now second Sacred Site also being taken towards the north here. So you can see that right now we've got quite a bit of action. Contesting Sacred Sites everywhere. It's prim par primarily that second one in the middle. We still don't actually see from Vortex any sort of archers. He does have double range coming out now, so rallying them here. But I can't help but feel it might be a little bit late. Uh, or... Yeah, I, I will say a bit late. So maybe this second town center came in a bit early. Maybe that that's the, the difference here. Losing a more units. Vortex definitely off his game today. You know, the, the more I watch Vortex, the more I think that that first game, maybe it wasn't a throw. Maybe it was just a big a, a misplay. And when I say throw, I just want to remind you guys, it's not a throw in the in the conventional sense. It was a tactical throw. It was a he, he was going for like a giga brain move, just throwing away his Chinese early on in, in the game. But now a raid coming in. And look, Vortex not paying attention once again. It definitely seems like Vortex is off his game today. 
Things not going well right now for our Spaniard. Unfortunate times. Unfortunate. Look at the look at this raid right now. This is huge. Where is Vortex? He's fallen asleep at the keyboard. I'm expecting a disconnect to come through any second right now. Keep in mind these games are live, so if it happens, it happens. But now back to uh, what is going on? Vortex, hey, wake up, Vortex! I'm losing my mind right now. I know you got a lot of villagers here. Vortex now gonna be like, oh, 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 damn. <laughs> wow. Okay. That so that's a big. You know, if we're if we're listing like pros and cons right now of this game for for Vortex, con lost 15 villages on my berry bushes. That's 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 definitely in the cons, not in the pros. Like, what's in the pros? Like, uh, pros, I I stopped my enemy from capturing the sacred site. Con, I lost four, <laughs> I lost four four royal knights before eight minutes. <sighs> yep. Yep, it's, it's it's a list that sometimes can be stacked in your enemy's favor, and it's and it pains you. Looks like he's going to be able to react to this this raid down towards the south a little bit earlier than uh, than the non-existent reaction down there. We'll ride on board with Puppy Boy and see how he's doing now as he pushes in towards this second town center. Plenty of units back here for him. And it looks like, fortunately, Vortex is paying attention to this. Going to continue moving forward. We see the villagers popping out of the town center. He turns his attention towards those those cavalry units. Town center going to continue pumping out villagers. We'll check in with Puppy Poor and see how he's doing. Puppy Poor at the moment on 38 villagers. One sacred site. He's capturing up the second sacred site. It's going to be close to getting it. It is neutralized or at least contested for the moment. Now coming through, it's going to go over towards him. So that's going to be two sacred sites. So definitely doing well on the deli here today uh, for Puppy Poor. Uh, village account 38 compared to the 42 of Vortex. So Vortex losing that French advantage as well as that 2TC advantage and losing more villages down on this, this raid or to this raid once again. We see another blacksmith. I say another blacksmith. That's the first blacksmith coming through for Vortex right now. So definitely feels a little bit off his game. If I, if I was going to give any suggestion over here, it would be probably to, to, to try and get those archers out a little bit sooner. I'm, I would have to go back and watch the, the game again and focus a bit more on Vortex, but it seems like those arch archers were just out a little bit too late. Battering Ram's now going to be coming down for Puppy Paw. Double stable opening here is... Or sorry, double blacksmith opening is going to mean that he can afford to pick up that siege engineering without going too much into debt. Uh, it looks like plus one uh, melee attack is going to be the only upgrade so far through... We can see plus one ranged armor about to come through 10 seconds before that bad boy's in. And now heading towards that northern sacred site. Looking to try and pick that one up. Over towards our east side. We've got Vortex out on a hunt. He's down out here gathering up food. A, a, a single knight just chills out for the moment. He's got arrow slits as well as the fortifications coming through. And now looking to wall up this sacred site. We can hear the, the timer or the, the, uh, the, the scholar standing on the site is going to expose that. He's going to be able to see all the walls going up as well. So by the time he reacts, by the time he looks to get his units up in that position, it's going to be already too late. Knight's continuing to move forward. Looking to try and pick up some reinforcements. Going to be able to spot a spearman around the tree. Archer's going to be able to spot them out. We'll do a quick count. 14 archers, 5 royal knights. Compare that to 9 horsemen and 13 archers, as well as the 2 spearmen. I mean, the compositions here aren't the best for Puppy Paw, honestly. He's got a lot of uh, archers out, when realistically, you'd prefer all of the, almost all of them to just be spearmen. Enemy attacking Puppy Paw's landmark? I, I'm, he, must have got, he must have attacked like a Dome of the Faith or something. But now Puppy Paw going to be looking to come in, looking to do plenty of damage here. Horsemen able to connect up with those archers at the same time. The, the knight's going to be able to get in on those the archers of his enemy. And this is sort of the consequence of not going for the spearman numbers that I was expecting to see out of our Delhi player, but instead going heavily into archers instead. He's able to force back the units for the moment, able to hold on with that plus one ranged armor. That's going to be all the difference for him. You can see that the plus one ranged attack is, is through on his enemy, though. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, at, at this point in the game, though, and Puppy Paul seems to be in a pretty solid position. The fact that he's able to confirm two of those sacred sites the raid down towards the berries was really the big changer in my mind because Vortex was looking good. He, he had his win condition. His win condition was just survive. That, that was the real factor, survive in feudal against the Delhi player. Uh, but he lost all of those villages. He's on 52 villages compared to 46 for Puppy Paw. Horseman going to be coming out now, looking to try and clean up these archers, doing a bit of an attack move. Unfortunately, those horsemen going to be falling for that the dummy out or the fake out on that and managing to keep all those archers alive here. Night numbers are, are, are starting to run a bit thin here. Right now, if I'm playing as Vortex, I'm thinking about adding a second and a third stable. And that's exactly what he does. Second stable going to be coming down right now. I'd love to see a third one up here as well and a big switch into Knights. And then from there, you're waiting for your enemy to go into that feudal or into that castle age. And then you're going to follow them up and go straight for that Royal Institute. Let's look to see whether he does that though. 
Back over on the other side, though, we can see that Puppy Paw close to aging now, actually. So we can see that Puppy Paw is in a pretty decent position. He's got the two Sacred Sites at the moment, going to be funneling him 300 passive gold a minute. We see that the Royal Knight just going to be chilling out at the moment. He's got the outpost here that's firing down with the arrow slits. Royal Knight should be able to survive until that actually gets neutralized. You can see it's sitting in about half capture at the moment, but the Horseman going to be able to make it across the map 30 seconds before that Sacred Site is neutralized. Very, very quick to neutralize, but unfortunately not quick enough, and, uh, enough rather, and that, uh, that Horseman going to be able to come out and force this Royal Knight back, keeping that Sacred Site alive. And with that H3 going to be coming through, it's going to be the House of Learning coming through for him. So no combat of the, of the Defender, not today. And we see stables coming down as well for Puppy Paw. So going to be heading into that composition, more focused around Knights. Uh, I would suspect that we might even see some crossbows coming out from him. We'll watch to wait and see how he plays it. But now back on the other side, Vortex is going to be raided again on the wood line. Things not looking pretty for Vortex. He's lost a lot of villages. Can you imagine right now Vortex was up 15 villages? Imagine if you just took 15 villages and just put them over here on this on this berry patch and then onto this berry patch. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's insane how many villages he lost in that early stage of the game. Really, really, you know, that, that's going to be something that we go back and check here because Puppy Paw is just looking in control. Now, keep in mind, this series is a best of seven. Right now, the score is 2-0 in this series. There's the potential for it to go to 3-0 and match point in this series or in, in, in this game right now. And at the moment, it's looking more and more likely that it's going to be that case. Puppy Paw is just all over Vortex at this point. No, and I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out of this game uh, with a 3-0. But now moving forward, we see Puppy Paw going to be having to defend here. Villager is going to be running back away from that front line. Outpost going to be filled up. One villager, unfortunately, going to be taken out there, charged by a lot of those knights. Knights turning their attention towards the outpost. Puppy Paw got plenty of lances himself in queue. We also see a couple of outposts getting thrown back down here. He's very cognizant of the fact that his enemy might look to push in and idle him. And with that, he's going to need space inside these outposts for his villagers. He just doesn't have enough space in that main town center. And now we can see a real committal coming through in for Vortex. He's not even going to be thinking about age 3. His enemy was too quickly up to age 3. Didn't really force enough units out of him. And I think that's the consequence of the super early second town center. I would have loved to have seen that town center come out maybe a minute or two later. Just try and get a couple of archers out beforehand. But now turning his attention towards a couple of outposts here. He tries his best to siege them down. He's got to fall back from this position. We don't see any crossbows coming out just yet. It's just, just going to be that trash army. Lance is in the mix as well. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as he looks to try and defend on this position. Got to be able to run a screen on these archers. He needs to try and defend them. The, the, still, we see the knights just continuing to fire back. It sounds like a spring on emplacement going to be coming through on one of these outposts. I think it might be the second one. I think it might be both of them, actually. I take it back. But they've got different windows. It's only one of these guys. I'm not sure exactly who it is, but I feel like as soon as the sprinkled outposts are up, you just got to fall back. You got to fall back. You can't fight into the sprinkled outposts. Too damn strong. Too damn strong. Able to take out those units from a real strong distance. Real far distance. And just the longer that you're fighting, the, lo the more often that you're bleeding. So I think for, for me, or at, at this point in time... Oh my god, look at Vortex. Did he build a mill here and then his villagers ran to siege this down instead of going under the berries? Is that what happened? I wouldn't be surprised if that's the villager AI. They're like, mill. Okay, what's my next command? Do I gather the deer? Do I gather the boar? Do I gather the berries? No. I kill the Palisade Gate. But now, unfortunately, for those villagers, they're going to expose themselves over on this position. Keep in mind, Puppy would have had no idea if they were just gathering up. But with that, taking down the Palisade Gate, it's going to mean they do expose themselves. Villagers now bringing out their berry baskets, apologizing as well, saying, I'm so, so sorry. I shouldn't have attacked your gate. But now the Knight's going to be looking for retribution as they get a nice little charge in on this position. Archer Mass is big, but you, you got to remember that, that, that with the Archer Mass, there are diminishing returns on this because your archers, they're going to be super effective up against, you know, things like the Spearman. But at the end of the day, you only need like seven or eight archers to actually take out a Spearman depending on what your upgrades are. Uh, and so the reality is once you start getting above those numbers, sure, they're effective up against, you know, horsemen and things like that. But the reality is once those knights are out, once those lances are out, you're going to be doing barely nothing to them. You can see they've got five armor on those bad boys compared to the archers, six damage. They're literally doing one damage. Wall gets taken out. And with that, Vortex going to be under attack over on this eastern flank. A lot of light, a lot of lances coming out for him. He's got plenty of wood in the bank right now. Needs to do a bit of a farm transition, but struggling at the moment with the resources that are out here and about here. Villagers on this forward gold mine as well. He's already taken off 600 from that, but the Scholar's going to be coming out and looking to do a bit of healing as well. I'm suspecting they got their healing upgrade. And now Vortex actually looking pretty damn decent with his numbers here. The Archer Mass in particular going to be what looked to be holding on. He's doing a great job overwhelming his opponent. The French Age 2 just trying its best to hold on.
spawned. He's got plenty of units in queue. Going to be rallying more out. The Scholar's just holding on for dear life. And you can see the French Knights, how damn strong they are here. Vortex looking pretty decent. He's managing to hold on. But at the same time, now the Knights starting to get thickened. Uh, well, the numbers there not looking the best. It's hard to tell what way it's, it's going. You can see there's so many there, there's so many archers out here, but by the same token, Puppy Paw is still in a pretty decent spot. At the same time, a raid going down in the base of Vortex. Vortex on 65 villages, Puppy Paw on 57. I don't know how many is lost right now, but Puppy Paw taking out villages once again while this action is happening. Sure, he's able to clean up this attack back, back here, but he's not even paying attention. Villagers just going down to horsemen. Imagine if these were knights, the whole villager line would be dead. And the villager numbers right now, 58 against 50. 59, Vortex on 2TC is losing villagers non-stop. Sure, he's got a big mass of archers, but what are these going to be able to achieve in 2022? The answer's not much. It's not looking good for Vortex right now. And with that, he's only just going to realize as more knights or more lancers begin to come in. The raid's looking strong, and Vortex taps out. Once again, good game. Getting called for Puppy Paw, and he goes to 3-0 in this series. And we are on match point. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go have a look at that village account because there were a lot of villagers lost that game and it wasn't, I got to say, it felt like Vortex may have been asleep at the wheel for some points in that game. Now, I'd love to be able to hover over this post-game chart and actually have the number read out to me instead of guesstimating over on the, the side here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that he was sitting at about 48, 49 villagers there and went down to about 40, and he continued to lose villages in that early stage of the game. So probably between 10 and 12 villages. Actually, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to go with 12 to 15 villages. That's a lot of villages going down nonstop. Uh, and then more raids and raids coming in. Look at that. I, at the end of the game there, he was over 80 villages, and by the end of it, he'd come down under 60. Incredible stuff there from Puppy Paw. Great micromanagement, great control, great macro, great APM. Really well played. And honestly, Puppy Paw, he is not, is he just a rising star? I mean, he is well and truly risen. He's looking great. He's looking strong. He's looking like he might be a favorite for Red Bull Wallalo if he gets a ticket. He, that's what he's fighting for. Game number four is going to be coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. Well, I say don't go anywhere. You know what? We're watching on YouTube. You can go somewhere. But make sure you come back in, uh, in, in 12 hours or 24 hours or whenever the next video gets uploaded because it's going to be game number four. I'll catch you guys then.